ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا واعلم ان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه كل بدعه ضلاله كل ضلاله في النار تدي باذنه سبحانه وتعالى with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will try to abort we will try to leave this physical world and we will take a very unique journey to the world of souls now when you look at your muslim brother you see him someone that you can feel see touch talk to but you really don't go and we don't go deep enough to understand the reality of this individual what makes you human what makes you so important that I want to be with you in your company I like talking to, talking to you socializing with you I want you to be in my company husband and wife husbands and wives they want to be close to each other and they don't want to lose one another why is that and what do we really care do we care the way that this individual looks or there's something behind that imagine a young man and they say see this picture this is the most beautiful young lady that Allah ever create she's yours but she has no soul she is dead would he take that he wouldn't she's beautiful she has everything she just died the soul left her right now he would not want that person when your spouse when they die you would be the first person to want to want to get rid of that individual body you don't want to be sleeping next to a dead body you don't say oh she was she's my wife and i love her he's my husband i love her i would like to keep the body next to me your wife will never ever is sleep with in the same bed knowing that you're dead she won't and you would not sleep with your wife on the same bed knowing that she is dead so what makes you so important but next minute you're worthless is the soul a ruh and this is what we want to understand and when i say we really want to live this physical world and try to understand this ruh itself I'm talking about that thing that makes you important when it's in you and when you are without it you're worthless 
I'm worthless. The best that you can do for me is to that you put me on under the dirt. That's the best you can do for me. Now let us go and try to understand what is the soul itself. How does the Sharia sees it? What is the connection between the soul and this physical being of yours, your existence and my existence? How do the bodies connected to the soul? Is there a particular place in your body which is the center of the soul? And if that is gone, you will die. People they say the heart is the most important thing. But there's a, the nowadays they can take the heart of a khinzir and stuff it in your stuff it in your heart in your chest and you can you can survive and live. They can give you the heart of another individual and you can survive. They can put a machine in you and you can still live. So what is it? Is it the brain? Sometimes they say, well, this person is dead. Or his brain is dead. He cannot, they call it vegetable, I guess. They cannot survive. So is there a certain central point when this, where, the, where, this, where the soul is concentrated and that point is the point that if it's missing in your body, you do not exist. How do the souls communicate? I mean, again, subhanAllah, it's a very unique world. Now, as you're sitting right now, maybe your hearts are communicating. Maybe the souls are communicating in different ways. How do the angels are related to us through the soul? When we die, where do the souls go? What happens to them? And do our souls in our sleep, do we meet? So these are questions that you want to know about your own soul. What really happens when they sleep? Yeah, I am asleep, but what happens? Have you ever asked yourself, the question, why when I'm calmly sitting this like this, I can breathe normally? Normal breath, breathing. And when I run, I breathe hard. And, just give me a second, I just run from wall to wall in the masjid, mashallah. Just relax. But at the same time, when you sleep, you breathe heavily. None of your physical organs are working as hard as, you, as those who are physically doing exercise. Climbing up a mountain or a ladder or a stairs. But when you sleep, we all breathe hard. And sometimes we snore. And a lot of times our wives want to get rid of us. Because we snore so loud. But... Why, would, why, do we, why would we breathe so hard? Though there's nothing in your body in reality working. Questions that we should ask ourselves. The first thing that you need to understand, for you and I to understand, the soul itself, is the soul is one of the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sir min asrar al-Rahman. Sir min asrar al-Rahman. Yaqul Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an. Kuntu ma'a nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the city of Medina. I was with the messenger of Allah in the city of Medina. Wa huwa yattaki'un ala asi. And he's leaning on something. Famarra bi nafarin min al-Yahud. So the group of the Yahud, they passed by him. فَقَالُوا بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضُ They said to one another, سَلُوهُ عَنُ الرُّوحِ Ask him about the soul. Now they talking to one another, ask him about the soul. وَقَالَ بَعْضُمْ لَا تَسْأَلُوهُ يُسْمِعْكُمْ مَا تَكْرَهُونَ If you ask this man anything, 
he will let you hear something that displeases you. So keep him, keep him silent. Don't ask him any questions. But they decided to ask him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالُوا يَا أَبَا الْقَاسِمِ Now listen, group of Yahud came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and now they want to ask him a question. فَقَالُوا يَا أَبَا الْقَاسِمِ All the father of Al-Qasim حَدِّثْنَا عَنِ الْرُوح Tell us something about the ruh. You say you're the messenger of Allah. You say you know Allah and you're connected to Him. Now tell us about this soul. قَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنُ مَسْعُودِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ فَقَامَ سَاعَةً يَنْتَظِرُ He passed for a second and as though he's waiting for something. وَفِي رِوَايَةً رَفَعَ بَصَرَهُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ He looked up صلى الله عليه وسلم قَالَ بِنُ مَسْعُودِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ فَعَرَفْتُ أَنَّهُ يُحَى إِلَيْهِ I realize now in this particular moment that Rasulullah is looking up now he is receiving revelation. قال فتأخرت عنه حتى صعد الوحي. He said, I stepped away from him صلى الله عليه وسلم until the, the, the revelation stopped. Until the revelation stopped. And then he started reciting ويسألونك عن الروح قل الروح من أمر ربي وما أوتيت من العلم إلا قليل. Now, all of a sudden, the answer came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fatwa came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is saying, and they ask you, o Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, concerning the ruh, the spirit. Tell them, قُلْ الروح مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي This surah that is asking, is, one, is it one of the things that the knowledge of which only with my Lord. The knowledge of the, of the ruh is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah ta'aqiban, He said about then, وَمَا أُوتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And of knowledge or humankind have been given only a little. Just a little about the ruh. طيب. So what is this ruh? Ruh is something that we will try to understand. Yesterday a non-Muslim came to me and he said, when I see you, when I'm looking at you, I'm not really looking at you. When I see this wall, it is really not a wall. When I see that individual, it's not that individual I'm looking at. So I got very curious. <laughs> I want to know what this man sees. And since we've been talking about jinn, it's like, oh my God, he's one of those guys. You know. And he says, no, when I see you, I see Allah. I see you, I see God. And he looked at me like this. And I told him, trust me, I'm not God, I don't look like God. And I can never be God. He said, no. See, you're thinking about this tangible, physical body of yours. I'm talking about the soul. I'm talking about the soul. See, he understands there's a difference between the soul and the spirit. I'm sorry, the soul and the physical body. But he, subhanAllah, went, he missed the target. He went to the wrong direction. And this, the ruh itself, ya ikhwati fillah, the ruh, it's something that you and I cannot really grab, uh, take a, a hold of it and say, this is something that I can point, pinpoint. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He was so upset, so angry, at those individuals who said, we will create shapes, like the shapes that Allah created, which has soul. The shapes of animals, humans, and to the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, cursed anyone who shapes and fashion statues. Say, so this is Jesus, this is Isa, this is, you know, this individual, this is an angel. يَقُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْمُصَوِّرِينَ Allah curse those who create image. On the day of judgment, you know what would happen to those individuals? Allah will say, now, you created them, allow them to live. Put the soul in them. Allow them to breathe. 
Make them like I made you. And none of them would be able to do this and they will be punished for this until the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And because of the importance of this soul, a lot of people, they think only us are important. Humans are important. Every soul is important. Every soul. Even the souls of the animals. Even the souls of the animals. Yeah, don't you remember the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In two different narrations. That the man who Allah has forgiven his sin, all the later that Allah has forgiven her sin, for providing water for a dog. Remember that hadith. A lady, baghiyya, yani a zaniya, prostituting in what called the church street, <laughs> something like this. And imagine one of those nasty people, and she sees a dog that needs water, and she goes down back to the well, and she brings the water for the dog, and Allah said, I overlooked all your sins, and I have forgiven you. But at the same time, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I went to paradise. Yani the soul, again, different, different, different journey, the journey of the soul, he said, I traveled last night, my soul traveled to paradise. And in, the, in paradise, I saw Amr, Al-Khuza'i. And this was the first man who adapted the idea of worshipping idols in al Jazeera Arabia, in the Arabian Peninsula. Qala, yajurru. He said, this man, he's dragging his intestine in Jahannam, wa'iyadu billah. He's, this is what he's doing. And then at the end of the hadith, he said, and I saw this lady, who's been attacked, devoured by a cat. Habasatha, because she killed the cat. She caged and put that cat in a cage and let the cat die out of hunger. He said, because of that, Allah will punish her in Jahannam until the end of time. So the Sharia would not only protect the humans and their souls, but also the animals. In Hadith al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? إِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْقَتْلَى وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الذبح. He said, when you kill, kill with kindness. And when you slaughter, is slaughter with kindness. Because of the importance of the soul. Yani subhanallah, Umar bin Khattab, he saw this Bedouin Arabi, carrying a huge knife on his left hand, and grabbing the, the, the leg of a goat, and dragging the goat. And Umar bin Khattab, قَالَ مَا هِيَ ابْنَ عَمْ He said, wait a second, relax. Don't abuse this innocent soul. It is enough that you're going to slaughter. Be kind to it. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu an, he saw this young people who captured a bird. And they put the, they, they put the bird and they say, okay, let us tie it to this tree and let us use that bird for a target. Let us use, you know, to, to improve our Ramiya. And the man who captured the bird, he said, for every time that you miss, you give me an arrow. It's a game. He's, he's making money out of this. So Abdullah ibn Umar came, and the young people, when they saw this Sahabi, they ran away. And Abdullah ibn Umar went to the bird. And while he was un, 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 releasing the bird, قَالَ لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَنْ فَعَلَ هَذَا لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَنْ فَعَلَ هَذَا He said, Allah, may Allah curse the person who did this. May Allah curse the person who did this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قَالَ لَعَنَ اللَّهُ مَنَ اتَّخَذَ رُوحًا قَرَضًا He said, may Allah curse the person who takes a soul as a target. And the Yahud, the Yahud, subhanallah, they used Palestinians as a target. And I'm not, I don't mean Gaza and what is taking place right now. No. The soldiers for the fun of it. 
They will see a Palestinian man who has been working for his family for, for Allah knows for how long and he's finally came. Wallahi, I was watching one of the videos that they were showing. This man that you can, you can see from his steps that the man, he's so tired. He's so sick, tired of the life that he's living. And, you know, he's looking down and he's walking and these two soldiers... The Yahud soldiers, they were saying, I can hit him. No, you cannot hit him. I can hit him. No, I cannot. You cannot hit him. And they were using this type of bullet that when it hits you, it won't just go through the body, but it will shatter. It will shatter in your body. So it will just go all over. And they said, why don't you hit his heel? Just one of the heels. And he hit it. Wallahi, you can walk. I mean, if you have the heart, you should go and look into that. They shot him. On the spot, his foot just, foot just shattered like this. And it was nothing but a piece of meat hanging. And the man, he was screaming out of pain. Holding whatever left him in his foot. Holding it up on his back. And those two, they came by and they stopped and said, I hit him. And they just walked. They just they didn't even have the decency, well, we did this, so let us just call ambulance and let them know the man needs help. They just left him like this. Now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul la'ana allahu man attakhada fihim shayin fihi ruh qarada or in target, as a target. From the world of souls, ya ikhwati fillah. There's something very unique. And you probably know it. But it's very unique. Very unique. And that is something that you can never explain. And I can never explain. Because it was already something that Allah has created in a certain way. And that is this unknown relationship between the souls. The souls can merge and be together or rebel from each other. Just from the first instant, from, from the moment that they meet, they say, no, no, I, I, no. I cannot get along with him. You didn't even talk to him yet. You didn't even say, salam alaykum. He said, no, I don't like the way he looks. Subhanallah. How do you, what's the problem with him? He said, I just can't, you know. Is the souls... The heart. They already communicate and realize, no, 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 you and I cannot get along. He can. And the exact, no comes exactly. And that's what they translate, oh, I, this, you know, there's no connection. And the exact opposite can happen. How are you, Akhi? Muhammad, alhamdulillah. I don't know him. I can get along with Muhammad because from the first I say, how are you, Akhi? We get along, we start talking. Why? We didn't know. Wallahi, sometimes a person, you know, at the airport, you know, sitting at the airport, and this old lady, she says, you look very nice, na? you look like a very nice young man. I say, thank you. you know, I have a problem with my husband. He never listens to me. I say, wait, lady, I don't even know you. Why are you telling me your personal life? You know, I don't even know you. Why would you tell me about your husband? And sometimes you just want to purchase something from the cashier. And that person doesn't like you. They just they refuse to treat you well. If they just say, okay, take your receipt. What did they do to you? And everybody else, when they came, the guys before me, oh, the, you were smiling. It's part of your customer service for you to smile. I just walked. And you're like, do I sting? You know, what is the problem? What did they do to you? Just like this. And they don't understand, and you don't understand, but it's the soul that just crashed. Your soul just bounced back from hers or his, and you just can't get along with that individual. It's the soul. لذلك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الأرواح جنود مجندة ما تعارف منها تلف He said, whatever. You know, we are like a junior. We're already soldiers. We know. 
We know who should we be with. We know our allies and our enemies. We know who should we talk to and the people that we should avoid and put, put limits and boundaries and walls against those individuals. We know this because of the arwah of Bani Adam. And sometimes, subhanAllah, someone tells you about another person and you just like that person. Someone tells you something about the other person and they mention their name and you don't feel that vibe. You don't feel that feeling. Now, how do the souls are connected to the body? See, the souls are connected to the body in a funny different ways. We go at different levels. The level, see, this is outside the body, but the first level of the souls is the souls that Allah create. And as a soul, we went to Allah and we all agreed and testified there's only one unique God worthy of worship and that is you, the one that we're standing in front of. So this day, at that time, we were not connected to the body. There's also other time we were not connected to the body and that's when we die. But there are other times that we are connected to a body. One, but in a different stage. Is during the pregnancy. After the 120 days, the soul is connected to the body. The soul will be brought and be connected to the body. How does it work? What is the soul doing in that? Why didn't Allah, since this body was already somehow alive, was growing, how come Allah did not say, I'll wait until you, your mother delivers you, and from that moment, you receive the soul? It's not like the soul has to be accounted for being in the womb of his mother. Why is that? We don't understand right now. Why does Allah has to place the soul inside the womb of his mother, and not wait until the child is born? If he dies, there was no soul wasted. You know? If he didn't make it, alhamdulillah. But no, for hikmah that is unknown to us today, after, two, after 120 days, Allah will order the angel to deliver the soul. This is a time for where the soul should be connected to the body. Is it because we grow together? Is it there's some other connection? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a'la. The other form of connection is during our lives. When we walking, we eat, we drink, we try to nourish this body and we and the soul is there. And the soul is there. The third, and we will talk this in, in a separate in a point inshallah, is at the time of sleep. When you sleep, are you alive or dead? Where, where are you? Are you alive? No. Are you dead? No. You're not alive and you're not dead. So what am I? You know, what am I? Am I still a human? You're still somehow some form of human. But where is my soul? It's not in you for sure. It's not in you. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah receives the amana from sons of Adam when he sleeps. Where? In my, on my bed? No. Nah, in a different world. We travel. The soul travels. And then Allah says, okay, let me receive the amana that I trusted you with. So a different level is unique. We will come to that inshallah. The fourth type that we connected to a body is only for special souls and this is the souls of the shuhada. We'll also come to that, the souls of the shuhada. They're not connected to the same body, but they, connect, they are connected to a body. We will get into that inshallah. And the fifth stage is when the body once again will be restated in the same body that you have right now. That will be brought back alive once again. Now let's talk about the one which is the most important thing, the one concerning sleep, when we sleep. Here, when we sleep, and I'll tell you the story number one of 
where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, remember the, Nabi, the incident of Rasulullah sallallahu and the Sahaba coming back from a war, and then everybody was walking all day long and all night long, and then just before Fajr they got tired. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yeah, who's going to keep us and you know, wait and wake us for Fajr? And then the Sahaba of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they looked around, and Bilal said, I'll do it, Ya Rasulullah. And then Bilal volunteered to be the watch that will wake, up every, will wake everyone up for Salat al-Fajr. Alarm clock for the Mujahideen was Bilal radiyallahu anhu. And Bilal, when everybody slept, he had no one to conversate, no one to talk to, no one to make him you know, stay up. Until, so he said, let me pray a salah. So he went to the salah. So he prayed qiyam al layl And then he said, I'm tired. I'm, I'm walk, I was walking like everyone else. And I'm up all night long. Let me just lean on my camel a little bit. So he leaned on his camel. And next thing that you know, Umar bin Khattab is sitting on the head of Rasulullah. Out of Hayya, he's saying, Hayya ala salah, hayya. And Umar bin Khattab, is, he was hit by the heat of the sun. And he woke up that late. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after this qal, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَبَضَ أَرْوَاحَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَبَضَ أَرْوَاحَكُمْ حِينَ شَاء He said, Allah has captured your souls when He wanted. وَرَدَّهَا عَلَيْكُمْ حِينَ شَاء And He sent them back when He wanted. يَا بِلَالْ قُمْ O Bilal, stand up, فَأَذِّنْ بِالصَّلَاةِ and call the adhan for a salah. Yani what does that mean? Yani Allah said, Allah took your soul when He wanted, and He sent them back all together when He wanted. That means the, body, the soul were not in the bodies. The souls of the people were not in the body. The souls of the Sahaba and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa they were not actually in the body. They, Allah took them. And when He said, now it's time for them to be returned, He returned them all. And that's what, what do we say when before we go to bed? Bismika Rabbi wa jabbi wa bika arfa'a. In amsakta nafsi farhamha. Wa in arsaltaha fahfadha bima tahfadhi ibadaka salihi. The dua that we teach our children every night and we recite it for them and we recite it for them is Bismika Rabbi. In your name, O Allah, wada'atu jambi, that I put my side on, on, on the floor. Qala wabika arfa'u, and through your name, I'll rise again. Fa'inam sakta nafsi. If you keep my soul, look, if you keep my soul, have mercy on it. Yani you're going to take my soul. Every night, we give that, and it's unconscious, we, maybe we don't think about it, but while we're saying that, you're saying, Ya Allah, if you keep the soul with you, farhamha. Have mercy on the soul. وَإِنْ أَرْسَلْتَ But if you send it back to me, فَحْفَظْهَا Protect it. That which you protect it with the salihin. And when we get up, in different hadith we say, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي عَافَانِ فِي جَسَدِي أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ Who kept me healthy in my body. وَرَدَّ عَلَيَّ رُوحِي And who sent my soul back. Who sent my soul back. قال وأذن لي بذكره and he allowed me to remember him. So it's very ajib. Very ajib how the soul works. And it's so ajib how we're not aware of any of this when this is happening. Now, let us take another point and this when malaika and the human connect. And this is the time of death. The Malaika, this is the time they get involved. When Malak al Mood comes, this regarding your age, your status, whether you're, whether you're healthy or ill, whether you're young or old, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're Amir or Ma'mur, person of authority or person that authority has been uh, established over him, regardless of who you are. Whether you live, you sleep under a tree, or you live in a palace, whether you live in comfortable life or hard life, he does not care, or do they, they do not care. When that comes, they come to you and I. And in this case, this is when the ruh and the malaika and the body, all three, meet at the same time. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us the first part of the soul leaves in your body is, 
Where? Your feet. The first part of your body that dies are your feet. And then as the soul has been taken of the body, the soul keeps coming up and up. And Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the soul reaches the collarbone, this is the time that the tawbah will not matter and will not be accepted. And then the soul, since the soul is living from the head, and that's why the basr, it will follow. And you know hadith of Salama radiyallahu anhu, when Abu Salama dad radiyallahu anhu, قال إن الروح إذا قبض تبعه البصر صلى الله عليه وسلم when the soul is being captured or being taken by the angel the sight the vision will follow it قال فدج الناس and then the people start crying فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تدعوا على أنفسكم إلا بخير do not say anything about yourself do not say anything but خير about yourselves فإن الملائكة يؤمنون فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةِ يُؤَمِّنُونَ So this is the time we will meet the body, the soul, and the angels will be in one place and all of them will be aware of what is happening. The next point that I want to talk about is the shuhada. Where these souls are not in the human bodies, but in a different type of bodies. They are in a body, but not a human body. يقول الله سبحانه يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرواح الشه أرواح الشهداء في طير خضر. He said that the souls of the shuhada are in green birds in jannah. One of the صحابة one of the تابعين he said I ask عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه and I said I ask عبد الله and I said to him الله سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون. He said, I said to him, Allah سبحانه وتعالى says in the Quran, ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا think not of those who were killed for the sake of Allah for the way of Allah as dead. Don't consider them dead. بل أحياء nay they are alive with their Lord عند ربهم يرزقون. And they have, they have provision. I said to him, what is the meaning of this? Abdullah said, radiyallahu anhu, I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the same question. The ayah said, do not think those who died for the sake of Allah as dead. Don't consider them dead. They are not dead. They are alive. Do not consider them dead. What do you mean they're not dead? Which is love? We lost them. يقول دن عبد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن أرواح إن أرواحهم في جوف طير خض لها قناديل معلقة في بالعرش تسرح من الجنة حيث شاءت. He said no. The souls of the bird of the shuhada are in side of a green bird. That flies in the Jannah and eats from the fruit of the Jannah and it goes wherever it go, wants to go. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to the shuhada and Allah will look at them and then Allah will say, هل تشتهون شيئا? Do you desire anything? نسأل الله أن يجعل من الشهداء يا إخوة. Allah will say to the shuhada, imagine Allah Himself will address directly the shuhada, and he will say to them, هل تشتهون شيئا? Do you desire anything? Would you like anything? قال فقال وأي شيء نشتهي ونحن نصرح من الجنة حيث نشاء What else can we ask for? And we flying, going through Jannah, whatever we want. قال That was done to them three times. The question was repeated to them three times. فَلَمَّا رَأَوْا When they realized that they would not be left alone, they said, if this is the case, يَا رَبْ نُرِيدُ أَن نُرَدُّ You نُرِيدُ أَن تُرَدَّ أَرْوَاحُنَا أَرْوَاحُنَا فِي أَجْسَادِنَا حَتَّى نُقْتَلَ فِي سَبِيلِكَ مَرَّةً أُخْرَى He said, if this is what you want, Ya Allah, if you have to take our request, then our request is for you to send, us, to send our souls back to our bodies so we may be killed again 
for your sake. But look at subhanallah. They didn't say, take us back so we can take care of our children. You know, give them better education. You know, have better life. Make sure that, no. They said, so we can be killed again. So we can be killed once again. Subhanallah. فَلَمَّا رَأَى أَنَّهُمْ لَيْسَ لَهُمْ حَاجَةً تَرَكَهُمْ When Allah saw that they have nothing else that of need, they have no need, Allah left them alone. Now, let us go back to the soul of this people. Whether it is a shaheed or a person who is a normal person or a salih. When your soul dies, and I don't, we all know the hadith how the soul is taken out of the body and for the moment it's easy, alhamdulillah, bi'idnillah. And for the, difficult, for the kafir it's very difficult. And however, it's not, it's not a blueprint for every mu'min that his soul will not be taken as easy as the rest of the mu'mineen. Because sometimes, if the mu'min is tahir, is pure, has no sins, then the soul will, be, will leave the body as easy as the water leaves its container. Other times, the mu'min will struggle in his death. Why? He's a mu'min, subhanallah. Mu'min will struggle in his death because the mu'min is not the level that he's not in the level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him. In a sense that Allah want him to be in a certain rank, but because of his shortcomings and sins, he is not to that level. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put him through this test so he may purify the soul of that individual and then he will reach that level. Tayyip, what about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Wasn't he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who used to say, Inna li sakar, inna li mawti sakarat. He used to say, indeed, death is painful. Subhan, was he a sinner? La. But this is raf'i darajat. To elevate him higher than what he ever imagined. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that could be for a moment. Also for a kafir. Don't think, oh, he died peacefully. He was in Jesus in Jannah. La. Maybe this kafir did khair in this dunya that he was not rewarded for. If the kafir does eat khair in this dunya, he was good to this person. He was good to the animal. He was good to the environment. He was good to his neighbor. He was good to this. And he did so much khair. And he has no khalaq, because there's no nasib, no share for kufar in akhirah. Allah will pay him during his death, and will make the soul leave the body a lot less painful than the rest of the mushrikeen. And that's why if a kafir just sits down and he dies, not because Allah loves him, ya fillah. Don't think, oh, mashallah, what does he used to do? Oh, he used to go to the strip club. Oh, maybe that's good because, you know, he died peacefully. We should try that. No, that is not how it works. You should know it's because for the khayr that he did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to reward him in this dunya. Tayyip. But what happens to the person who dies as a mu'min? See, when you die, the first who will receive you are the angels. And imagine, imagine, take this, this is you. This is you. When you die, the hands that will touch you are malaikat al-rahma. Malaika, after the malaika takes the soul out of the body, the malaika will talk with the one first to receive you. So what the malaika, when the malaika receives you, and you're in that situation, oh my God, and I'm in the hands of the malaika, and the malaika calling you but with the best names that you ever imagined. And in this, what the malaika would do is they would take that soul and then the soul will be traveling through the seven heavens. And as you know, for every heaven, the other malaika will come and join the soul or will welcome the soul until he reaches under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will 
So he sent this soul back. Now, in this, at this time, something very unique happens. And that is, as soon as you go to the heavens, your mu'minin who died before you, they will receive you. And then they would ask you a question. And some of them, they will say, let him take a rest from dunya, from the difficulties of this dunya. Let him rest. Let him relax from the pain of this dunya. And imagine you now, you just left your body, you just experienced a different world. You start seeing angels, malaikatir rahma, who are calling you by the most beautiful names, the most beloved names to you, who are welcoming you from one angel to another, who is telling you glad tidings to you. The malaika just told you, Now, in all this, and heaven after heaven after heaven, and these people, these all souls would meet you, and they ask you a question. And others will say, let him rest. Give him time. He just came back from a dunya. And then when you answer, you take your breath and you answer the question. Then another question would be asked. And the father, and the mother, and the son, they will say, How is my son? Or how is my wife? Is he still alive? Yes, he's still alive. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And they said, well, this is khair. If he's ma'asi, is this, he still have chance for Allah to give him chance to repent. And if he's a righteous man, he will be increased in darajat. And they would ask your father, or your grandfather, or they would just ask about you. Until they said, Where do you think about so and so? How is he doing? And the soul would say, Ama ataku? Did I come to you? And they will say, Dahababihi ila ummihi tawiya. He went to Jahannam. So if the soul that they're asking about died before you and is now amongst the souls who are welcoming you, then that soul is in Jahannam. That soul is in Jahannam with Iyadu Billah. But what is unique is how the soul would meet one another and talk to one another and welcome with one another. Now, subhanAllah, this death is very shocking. And seeing the angels are very shocking. And one thing that makes this process of you leaving the body and going through this easy and bearable and comfortable is one thing. And Talha radiyallahu an once he was sitting and Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu passed by him and Talha was sad. So he said to him, what is wrong? He said, ya Umar, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a statement and he said, I know a kalima that if a person says it, all this process and things would be very easy for him. And I forgot to ask about that kalima until he died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, he's dead and I don't know what was the kalima. فَقَالَ عُمَرَ بِنُ الْخَطَابَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ I know the kalima. He said, what is it? قَالَ is the kalima that Umar, that Rasulullah asked his uncle to say it. لا إله إلا الله. So if the person says La ilaha illallah at the time of his death, then all this process and difficulties of the journey would be very, very, very easy. Bi idnillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after that, after that, the soul will be brought back to the body. And if the person is from the people of Jahannam, that everyone, everything else, other than the jinns and the human, will experience, will hear the punishment of those individuals. One of the ulama, by the name Al-Hafid Abdul Haq Al-Ishbili, rahimahullah, 
when he was explaining the sharh of in Sahih Muslim, when he was explaining, explaining the sharh, hadith of al adab al-qabr, he said to the students, he said, you know, we used to take our horses and camels to the graves of the mushrikeen, and we used to see how the animals react when they go to the punished to the grave, where the the, uh, the inhabitants of the graves, graves being punished, and some of the horses will just run away. Some of them they will listen, but they will not react. And this is Subhanallah something that they've been trying it from ages, from time, and Subhanallah, it did work for some of the ulama to show the students. Now, when you come back to your grave, you will be brought back to your grave and you will settle in your grave. Yani subhanallah. You will settle and you sleep. And then the two angels will come. And then, of course you will hear everything, but here you will have special bodyguards. Ya ikhwati fillah, if we just list these things, so we may do as much as we can, so we can benefit and hire them to be our future bodyguards. I think we should write them down. He said, "Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna al-mayyita idha wudi'a fi qabri, yasma'u khafqa ni'alihim, hina yuwalluna, yuwalluna anna. He said, when the deceased is placed in his grave, and the soul is back, he hears the footsteps of the people who are leaving and departing from the grave. فَإِنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا If he is a mu'min, كَانَتِ الصَّلَاحِ Imagine, he said, if you're a mu'min, your first bodyguard is your salah. Where? On your head. You're lying down, this is you, and the salah is right here watching over you. قَالَ وَالصِّيَامُ عَنْ يَمِينِ I'm fasting on your right hand. وَالزَّكَاةُ عَنْ يَمِينِ And the zakah, on, I'm sorry, عَنْ شِمَالِ on his left وَفِعْلِ الْخَيْرَاتِ And the other good deeds that he used to do, such as sadaqa, being kind to the relatives, and doing ma'roof, all of them would be standing on his feet, defending that person. Then the person may say, Akhi, I'm a faqir. I'm faqir. I never paid zakah. Does that mean the malaika is going to attack me from the left? لا. If the zakah was never wajib on you, Allah will protect you bi idnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the munkar wa nakir, they will come. And the first place that they will approach you from is the head. فَتَقُولُ salah, Not from this side. And then they will go to your left, and the siyam will say, no, 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 not from this side. And then they will go to your left, and the zakah will say, no, not from this side. And then your feet, not from this side. And the angels would not have any other choice but to call you by your name and say, Ya Fulan, Qum, sit up. And you will sit up. Now they did not scare you. You will sit up normally, like you will wake up. After all this happens, فَيُقَالُ لَهُ إِجْلِسْ فَيَجْلِسْ قَدْ مُثِّلَتْ لَهُ الشَّمْسُ وَقَدْ أَخَذَتْ بِالْغُرُوبِ and it appears to him that the sun is setting. Now he got up and he sees the sun and the sun is setting. And then look what this mu'min would say. And then he would say, Allow me to pray Asr, I don't want to miss Asr. Because he used to protect his salah. He would say, before he said, who are you? You look so strange. He would say, don't talk to me, I want to finish my salah. I want to finish the salah. And the angels say, don't worry, you will not miss it. And they will ask the usual questions until the person answers all the questions and then they will leave him as we know and they will show him 
a window to Jahannam, and they say, this is your spot, had you disobeyed your law. And they would close that. And then they would open another window, and they would say, this is your place to Jannah, because you obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, a special order. And imagine you're betting, you're, you're, everything comes, it's, a, it's what you call the custom-made bet. You know, custom-made sheet. Only for you. Not for anyone else. Not like one of those, you know, five or what, seven stars hotels that you say, oh no, we just washed them and we cleaned them and they threw a few chocolate on the bed and they say, now jump and, you know, dive, attack the chocolates. No. This is a custom-made betting and bet from Al-Jannah. From Al-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that, they would not be in AC unit. Or heaters, no. That to, to maintain the temperature of the room. It will come directly from Jannah. Yeah, that breeze would come straight from Jannah. And it's like, MashaAllah. And you see your family in Jannah. You see your wives in Jannah. Brothers, MashaAllah. Quick death, eh? And then, then the person will request and say, Allah, aqim as yeah, Allah is taking this side, it's taking forever. I want the Qiyamah to side now so I can go back to my family and enjoy my property. This is Ya Ikhwati Fillah, the first part of this talk with Idni subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will continue with Idni after uh, Brother Naveel Aziz, who should be coming any minute.